Dang won a place among the heroes of America very early in his career. His vision, his dream of seeing the lands beyond the mountains, led the pioneers new territories. He taught them the secrets of the woods, how to fight in the dark wilderness against starvation, wild animals, and marauding Indians. It took more than a strong arm, a good rifle, and a steady eye. It took shrewd cunning. Boone's cunning and courage first began to grow into a legend along the frontier through such adventures as his daring rescue of the Hessian Colonel von Arnheim, and it came about this way. In the early 1750s, the French and the English became locked in a bitter struggle for the Ohio Valley. The French began building a chain of forts, incited the Indians against the English colonists, and war started to flame once again through the wilderness. Then came 1755. In the history of Indian fighting on the colonial American frontier, the year 1755 is written across the deep green beauty of the woods in blood and fire. A wily Indian strategist, Chief Ketakahasa, lured General Braddock's forces into a trap and smashed his army in one of the worst defeats in the history of Indian warfare. One reckless young officer rallied a remnant of the scattered redcoats from away in an orderly retreat. He was the 23-year-old George Washington. The fortunate ones on the battlefield, the dead, were merely scalped. Of the rest, few escaped. I'm done for. It's a, it's a bad one, Colonel. You better push on. Colonel, leave me a pistol. My daughters were at that fort. Colonel. Yes. There was strategy behind that attack, sir. Exactly. Something besides Indian thinking. They knew every trail to the fort. They located the powder magazine at once. Come on. Think. He wouldn't point you out, Colonel. What man? One of our own. Who? 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 The Indians were met and directed by whites, by the French from the north. This is terrible. What are we to do? It's my duty to take this information to Benson at once. But my daughters, I must find them. Benson will send troops. You can return with them. <laughs> Nothing we can do against odds like that. But I cannot allow to throw your life away, Brian. But my own daughters in the hands of savages. A dead father won't help your girls. 
Come with me to Vince. But he's two, maybe three days away. No, sir, I won't leave my girls. I'm a Hessian officer in the British Army. And as such, I have certain duties. And I'm a father. Those are my daughters. Please. All right. Thanks. But emotional sentiments have no place in war. Remember this, Mr. Byrne. Of course not, but in this case, I'm sure Colonel Benson would approve. Oh. oh, if I'd only learned their stupid language instead of French. A lot of good it would have done you in Philadelphia. Maybe this one will bring us food. Talk. Good heavens, he speaks English. Talk. Food, we want food. No. Why are we camping here? Why are we waiting? Savvy, waiting. Chief, him, come. Make you squaw. They haven't harmed your daughters yet. It's another day like this, and I shall try what you say is impossible, Colonel. They will kill you for sure. In the army, my dear Brian, we have learned to watch for opportunity and to grasp it when it comes. No, I'm no soldier. And these Indians are waiting for someone. The girls won't be harmed by anyone. Sometime, night or day, vigilance may relax, and then... I'm as anxious for action as you are. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, but to see my own daughters trussed up like fowl with those, those savage beasts guarding them. Just calm yourself, sir. Soldier from one of our posts is here. Send him in. Private Hassel reporting, sir. At ease, your regiment? Colonel von Arnheim, sir. There's been a massacre. Good heavens, was the fort wiped out? Almost to a man, sir. I believe the Colonel and Lieutenant Perkins got away. I'm almost certain I saw them in the woods. Two officers and a civilian, riding like mad. Let's hope they got through. How did you escape? I was out of camp, sir. I used my ammunition up, shooting into the thick of the devils. When it looked like the finish, I started here for help, fast as I could. Good work. Go to the cookhouse and get double rations. My orders. Thank you, sir. Sergeant. Ask Mr. Boone to come here, please. Now, sit still, little hawk. Steady. Oh, uh, some fellow in Switzerland did it like this. Eat apple? No, oh, put an arrow through it. Oh, no. Don't you trust me to put an arrow through that apple? Arrow into apple, not good. Apple into little hawk, very good. Colonel Benson wants to see you, Boone. Right. Maybe Colonel stand for target. More than likely, he wants me to be one. Daniel Boone, sir. Colonel? Ah, oh, Boone, I need you badly. Yes, sir. Colonel von Allerheim's regiment has been wiped out. Is that the Hessian officer? Yes. Anybody get away? The soldier that brought the message thinks there's a chance that the Colonel and one or two others escape. I want you to scout in that direction and find out. That means getting through the French and Indian lines. Well, I reckon that can be done, Colonel. This attack on von Allerheim's regiment was no ordinary sortie. It was well planned. With advanced knowledge, I'm sure of that. The French from the north aren't missing any bets, sir. Exactly. You know the woods better than any man, Boone. Bring back information on every phase of this attack. My hands are tied. I have no men to send out now. I'm sending word to General Braddock at once. There's a chance he may muster a small army later. I'll leave right away, sir. Please. Every scrap of information you can pick up will be valuable. Any news of French or other white renegades helping them. But above all, try to get news of Colonel von Arnheim. Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you. I heard a 
Mr. Courier has come in, sir. Yes, Captain Fraser. There's been a terrible massacre. Only Colonel von Arnheim and one aide may have got away. Von Arnheim escaped, sir. Let us hope so. One of the most valuable men in Braddock's command. Well, of course, sir, I agree with that. Captain Fraser, we're badly off here, and I cannot spare you. But this is of first importance. Dispatches, sir? I shall be glad to ride. Yes, dispatches for General Braddock. I'm asking him to send any men he can spare. There are other matters, reports, and what news we have about our Heinz disaster. I leave at once, sir. Take the best and most trustworthy Indian guide. Go straight to headquarters of Fort Stewart. But you must go on foot. Trails are rough. There are swamps to cross. Very good, sir. Straight to Fort Stewart. I've traveled on foot before, sir, and I've crossed many swamps. ahead for ambush. Like the last one. Plenty hurry. Look, they're heading south, away from Benson's outpost. Not raid outpost. Maybe go for loot. Maybe just scared, huh? They don't look scared enough to suit me. What do you think? Well, we're almost through their lines now. If we keep off the trails, shortcut through the deep country, we should be within a couple of miles of that massacre. Anyhow, it'll give us a chance to look the country over. If we keep our hair. Boone, like look over deep country. Always for scouting war? There's not always going to be war, my friend. But Boone, fine war scout for army. Good work, good pay. Boone also scout for hunting meat and for farm to grow food. Ah, food. I thought that would get This soil will grow anything. Logs for building houses. Soil for crops. It's a great good country, little hawk. The Indians would let a man settle here if he wanted to. In peace. All good. But war on now. Hmm? Huh. this bird, at least we would have something to eat. Well, I just tried to keep watch to warn you. I'm no Indian fighter. I'm sorry. One cannot turn a merchant into a military man overnight. 
Just relax. Colonel Boone, at your service, sir. May I ask your name? Lieutenant Colonel Baron Kurt Neipausen von Arnheim, 5th Colonial Regiment, His Majesty's Army. Mr. Bryan from Philadelphia. We better get low. Might be scouts around. Who are the women folks the Indians got? Those are my daughters. Is the army close? Are you a military scout, sir? Oh, we're saved. We're on our own. Oh, no. Helen, Rebecca, my poor girl. Still have four of us. I'm not a fighting man, but... We've looked over the camp. We might even surprise them. We're not enough of an army to follow up with an attack, eh, Colonel? It will take strategy and caution, even with Mr. Boone and his Indian friend, to help us. Yeah, it looks like they've camped for the night. That gives us our chance. Direct attack is out of the question. What is your plan, sir? We might try magic. How much powder you got, Colonel? Uh, two flasks. Good. Oh, you'll have to get rid of those fancy clothes. What? That red coat makes a fine target. That's one of the reasons for the massacre. You better leave your coat here, Colonel, and you'll travel better without your saber. I'm a Hessian officer in the British Army. If found out of the uniform behind the French lines, I may be hanged as a spy. If the Indians get you, Colonel, They'll hang that white wig along with your natural hair as a pair of prize scalps. <laughs> You're right. I think I'll let the Indians have this. Colonel. The artillery. Boom. You're a strategist, sir. I know Indians, I hope. Fuses, different lengths. We'll set the short ones last. Exactly. We'll attack the camp on three sides. Little Hawk will take the back. I'll take the right flank. You and Brian take the left. Mm -hmm. Leaving the avenue for their escape. Excellent. Now, when the artillery barrage starts, the infantry charges. That's us. Four of us, yelling like six. I hope to heaven it works. We'll separate and start at dusk. Those Indians will get suspicious when their two friends don't come back. Only with caution may we succeed. That's the point. Let's go. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, I should go mad with another night of this. Oh, darling, please try to be brave. Anyway, we might get a chance to talk to this chief when he comes, this walking eagle. Eagle? Brother, it'll be a better name for him. Oh, 
Come back soon. Of course. Oh, my sister and I won't be a burden to you, I assure you, Mr. Mr. Boone's the name, ma'am. Oh, I declare if it isn't dear, dear Colonel Von Arnheim. Oh, thank heavens, the army's here. We're looking at the army, ma'am. What there is of it. It won't take those Indians long to find out. Let's go. This way, Colonel. here if we keep one eye open. I don't want to be a nuisance, but do you have any decent food? I'm sorry, we can't take a chance in the woods at night. Might be able to get some meat at daylight. Yeah, I'll think so. Here's some blankets. Make yourselves comfortable. Here you are, girl. You take first watch. Why wasn't I awakened for my turn at guard? This wasn't a job for the military. Oh, I'm so hungry. How did you get this? Without a shot to arouse every Indian for miles. You gotta know more than the rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Dig in. Oh. oh, Little Hawk. Everything quiet on the last watch? All good. a little slice over here. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, we better get started. Uh, you can't fool Indians for long. Have you any plan at all how to get through the enemy lines? Look, Colonel. Here's the line. We broke through here. We're going to circle around where they're not going to look for us. Around the rock country, south of Fort Harris. We might have a chance to break through there. As you say, I place the greatest confidence in you. Fort Harrison it is. Fort Harrison, nothing. No more. What? He's thinking of his stomach. There'll be food and weapons buried there. I never saw an Indian yet who could find an army supply hideout. True. Under the fire pit or a stockade itself. Flour. Beans. Ah, beans. Powder and shot, that's what we're liable to need. And bad. Fight? That good, too. Plenty fight. Plenty eat. You chatter like a hen turkey. Keep your mind on Fort Harrison and keep your eyes and ears open. You take the risk. Ah, uh, what the? I say. Hey. What did he say? White man, white woman on trail. Go Fort Harrison. Maybe so. So this was your rendezvous. You were more interested in two white women than in following my orders. Your orders? The orders of the French nation. You know what's being promised you, and this is the way you express loyalty to France. Van Arnheim was to be taken alive at the battle. That was your task. Still can do. Ah, there are others with him now. It's important that they not know who I am. Do you savvy? Oh. Captain Fraser? No, it. Exactly. Now listen carefully. Colonel Van Arnheim must be my prisoner. Attack fort, take. No. I'll arrange things personally this time. You ought to stay close at all times. Attack on signal only. Now get your men together. We go to Fort Harrison directly. Send your scouts ahead. Attack what are you?
on the side of a hill. Fortunate for be afraid of death or pain till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane. You better take cover. What did he say? If I'm not mistaken, that quotation was from Shakespeare, Macbeth. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. That's what the witches say. What did he mean with Till Burnham Forest come to Dunsinane? In the battle between Macduff and Macbeth, Shakespeare had soldiers, each disguised with a branch of a tree, moving to Dunsinane Castle. So it looked as if the whole forest was moving. A remarkable fellow, that Shakespeare. A remarkable fellow, that wound. Here's your Indian. Why, it's a mirror. Oh, it's broken. I hope it doesn't bring us bad luck. No, we've had enough to last a lifetime. Uh, well, at least we can clean up and feel civilized again. Maybe get a decent meal? I'll look at the food tin. Hiding place there. Mm. Little hawk already sees. Well, if I had your eyes, I'd never go hungry. Well, I'm very soft. Must be here. You're right. Ah, oh, mighty fine meal. Why, of course, Mr. Boone. My daughters are famous in Philadelphia for their recipes. I bake the biscuits myself. What is your favorite dish, Colonel? I can try and have it for you by tomorrow. My favorite dish is sauerbraten mit Kartoffelfüße und Preiselbeeren oder ein Wiener Schnitzel mit Hartelsalat und gerösteten Kartoffeln und Palatschen. I'm sure that will be very easy for you to prepare in this wilderness, my friend. I take the first watch. Do you mind if I keep you company? It's against military regulations. Military regulations, bah! We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed. And we are not made to woo. Puff. I'll finish filling the powder horn. I'll help you. Papa, I'm sure you won't mind cleaning up after such a wonderful meal. Well, let's get to work. No, me man. Dishes squaw work. Well, I guess I'm the only private in this army. <laughs> There's no one to watch for the far side of the stockade. Oh. Uh, that was a mighty graceful fall, miss. I'll remember that the next time I do a minuet. <laughs> <laughs> it's very becoming, Colonel. You think so? <laughs> At least it's more practical in these parts than His Majesty's uniform. Uh -huh. Colonel. Yeah? Look. One 
the middle looks like Captain Fraser. He's one of our officers. Let him in. Better keep an eye open anyway. Captain Fraser. Boone, I'm glad you got through. And where's the Colonel? Oh, Colonel Von Arnheim, I didn't recognize you. Are you, you directly from Colonel Benson, sir? Yes. I have orders to safeguard you until we can both return. Good. At least we can offer you our simple hospitality. You must be very tired. Ladies? I just had a hard journey. Would you like to prepare some food? Oh, a thousand pardons, ladies. May I present a fellow officer? Captain Richard Fraser. Captain, the Mrs. Helen, and Rebecca Bryan. How do you do? And uh, you have met their father, who supplied trans fed the army. Of oh, course. Yes. It's a pleasure to have you with us, Captain. We'll do everything we can to make you happy. Rebecca, start the fire, please. Excuse me, Miss Bryan. So, it looks as though you're the sole survivor of a regiment, Colonel. Possible. I was in advance. My duty was to advise the general on the campsite and disposition of troops. And I had to go ahead to find a place for my supply wagons. Then they circled and sprung the trap from behind, catching the main body of the troops. It was Brian who saved us. He got the horses. Lieutenant Perkins went along, but he died later. What's with Colonel Benson, sir? Any trouble at the outpost? Well, none when I left. Benson was afraid even you might not get through, Boone. I volunteered to go, just in case. Yes, that's the military. Send a good man, and then uh, a better one, to make sure. Oh, now, Mr. Boone, you're flattering. But I am a trained military observer. A military report is essential. I would like to make a report for the military record. It is impossible that an attack so perfect could have been organized in the spur of the moment. They must have known our exact route. Closed in like two pincers on the sides. No one knew what train we would take. Nobody but the men who were present at the last staff meeting with General Braddock. What are you implying, Colonel? Somebody at that meeting betrayed us. It's a startling suggestion. Unfortunately, it's probably correct. It's a task for military intelligence. Well, I guess you military men will have to figure that out later. Right now, our job is to save our hair and get back to Colonel Benson. Well, how far away is it? No longer than two days, forced march. Not with the women folk. We're back at the lines, remember. Colonel, I'd like to go alone and pick up an escort. The war parties have all split up and are back over the hills with the main French troops. My orders from Benson are to see you through, Colonel. He wants you to return as soon as possible. The tribes may have split up, and they may not. We can't take any chances. I'd like to go and get an escort, sir. I'll go with you. I think I'd better join you gentlemen, too. No, Captain, you must have a rest. And the ladies need a good man to hold the fort. To eat, to drink, an in-communion sweet, quaff immortality and joy. You see, Captain, I'm sure you will be well taken. Boom, well, there's no reason for any further delay. Let's go. Surround for it. Too quiet. No birds, no animals. Something's wrong. You stay here. I'll go up and look around from the top of that cliff.
jump off the cliff and I fall. Oh, why land on those rocks when there's a nice soft tree? <sighs> well, looks like these hills aren't as empty as Fraser thought. We'd better get back to the fort. It was a short excursion, gentlemen. My Indians were watching. I knew you wouldn't get far. Step forward. Colonel! Fraser is the traitor. He betrayed the whole army. He bragged about it to us. We wanted to warn you, Dad. But the Indians would have shot us. Oh, smite him, you bitch! Come on. You are the foulest kind of traitor. Traitor? My dear Colonel. I'm a loyal citizen, an agent of France, and a soldier. Would the soldier sneak in into a position of trust, bearing the uniform of his enemy? No. Would a gentleman embarrass, ill-treat ladies, no matter what's the cause? No. You are just a common spy, an imposter, a cheat, a liar. Just a moment, Colonel. We've met before, remember? The Court of Versailles, May 1750, the ball of La Marquise de Beaumarchais. De Brissac? Yes. Major Antoine de Brissac of the French Colonial Office. You're on General Braddock's staff? You don't talk like a Frenchman. I'm the Vicomte Antoine de Brissac, Monsieur Wildman. Yes, and I'm King George. Let's go on from there. De Brissac? I never would have expected to meet you here in the wilderness of America. I've seen him around Benson's outpost. I never thought he was French. I was educated in England, Spain, and France. I know London as well as you know these woods. What's your game now? Why don't you kill us at once and be done with it? I didn't cross an ocean just to kill a few frontiersmen, nor a Hessian officer on the British general staff. I reckon you'll turn me over to the Indians for torture. But what about the Colonel? He's a military man. You're right. The Colonel is entitled to something better. Go ahead, yeah. As I was saying, Boone, the Colonel is the finest tactician in the British colonial service. If I show up in Paris with him as my prisoner, the British will be convinced of their folly in this colonial adventure. What do you figure on doing with me? My dear Boone, I'm sure they will greatly appreciate the appearance of one like you at Versailles. The court needs new buffoons. France is a long way off. I got away before. Don't take me for a fool, Boone. I wouldn't attempt to get you on French soil with only these few Indians. I have too much respect for your ability. And also for yours, my dear Colonel. If you only want us, why don't you let the girls go? I don't know, Boone. Life is too dull here in these woods. The ladies may accompany us to Canada. Or even further, they don't bore me. Why, you miserable... Yep. <laughs> oh, Monsieur O'Brien. You will be left here in these woods, where you can carry on all the trade you want. There, ladies and gentlemen, is your escort.
It's a full-scale Shawnee war party. They'll be back for blood. And Fraser, you better fight or I'll finish you myself. I'll fight my crude friend and about the other we'll see. Those Shawnees probably heard about the big fight between the whites and are trying to get in on the Luffy. They'll attack at all sides at once. I had no intention of risking your lives. I thought it was my own party. I'd rather take my chances with the Shawnees than with you, Brissac. We're all liable to get that chance. We can still save ourselves with a little intelligence. Those bombs? They're good, but not good enough. Not enough of them, not powerful enough. What we need is firepower. One small piece of artillery, say. Firepower? How many rifles were in the hiding place? 30 or 40, maybe. And uh, do we have tongues, leather tongues? Oh, raw hide, sir, plenty. I can cut tongs. I see what you mean. Captain Fraser, can you trust your two Indians? Well, under the present circumstances, we're all in the same boat, as it were. Then come, all of you, please, ladies, help. What? I want these. Did you ever kick a porcupine, Miss Helen? Why, of course not. No Indian ever did either. Oh, the Shawnees will charge, and our stockade will bristle like a porcupine. With gun barrels, all of them firing. My bet those Shawnees don't get close enough to this porcupine to see the bristles. My, the Colonel is a genius. Everyone, please. Mr. Boone will watch the approach, judging the right moment, and give the order to commence firing. I hope one salvo will do the trick. We have little time to reload. The rifles are all checked and loaded. Good. Now we'd better get some rest. It'll be daylight soon, and we'll have a real fight on our hands. Fraser, post your guards. Ah, how are they? Go to your station, Brian. Hmm? Oh. Colonel, can I pull these thongs? Well, if you like it. Would you not be afraid? Not with you helping me. We really haven't had a chance to talk. You showed me how to dance the minuet. No wonder it was all those savages around. Terrible. They didn't ask for this war. It's a white man's war. They're good people if you know how to live in peace with them. You mean you'd want to stay in these woods even after all this happened? You never really saw the woods. You just saw the edge of the forest. You know, out toward the west and south a bit, there's a land called King Tuck. Grass as tall as an antelope's ear, blue as the ocean. Deer so tame, they come right up to you. Man could build a house just for picking up the timber. A man could really live there, really live. There are Indians there too, aren't there? Oh, sure. Indians all over this country. It's their country. But the land's big. There's plenty of room for everybody. You know, that country out there is a second paradise. 
A man could build a house under the honey locusts, on the edge of a field of the prettiest flowers you ever saw. After a day's hunting, could dabble his feet in the coolest stream. It's a beautiful place for kids, too. A man could make a wonderful home there with the right woman. Oh, Daniel. Of course, there ain't any dancing academies or anything like that. Soldier, sir. I'll give you the benefit of a wall. Back up against that gate. I demand. I insist on a court-martial. This man is no soldier. No, but I've skinned a lot of skunks. Me scalp, me scalp. Colonel, these people are uncivilized. I treated you with military courtesy. I ask the same from you now. Just a moment, Boone. He has a right to kill you, as he would a dangerous beast but you shall be given the full benefit of military court. Your sword, please. You are my prisoner. Mr. Bryan, secure him. With pleasure. Shawnees are out after quick loot like buzzards after a battle. They won't tackle us anymore. If that's so, we will leave soon. No, we better wait for morning. We'll need all the daylight we can get the first few hours. We've got a lot to do, Colonel. Packs to make ready, blankets for the ladies, and food to prepare. Oh. I will follow your instructions. You know the wilderness better than I do. We'll leave a sun up. Little Hawk. Help me bury this Indian. Lift hair? Leave his hair alone. When are you going to grow up?
what he wants, Rebecca. I'm afraid I'll kick him in the face, the traitor. Oh, you better take this along. It's always good protection for us young ladies. Oh, my dear Miss Rebecca. I turned over the pan and spilled the water. Would you kindly... Freeze him! One moment she dies. Don't. Drop those weapons. Back away from them. No, no, the other way, Woodsman. Oteo, Dick. <laughs> Boone, I want you to have the honor of welcoming our guests. If they don't kill you coming in, I shall shoot you in the back. Without court martial. No harm will come to anyone else unless you provoke it. Come, Boone. The gate. Bahagwa! Wadanda! with us only because it pleases me to have you here at the moment. Any trouble from you and you will be left behind. Is that clear? Rodentia!
No. <laughs> Shut up. The bone is surrounding you. <laughs> Make camp here.
That's what you're looking for? Superstitious savage. You were terrific! However did you manage to surround Fraser? I left my calling card. On the ground, in the woods, on the trees. A calling card? It's a picture of a turtle. A turtle? Turtle's my Indian name. <laughs> nice. You don't know how you did it. Colonel Sal, I'm going to make a special report to General Braddock. <laughs> ah, Colonel. I'm glad you waited. <laughs> this is where our paths separate, I suppose. You into the wilderness, and I back to Europe. Mm, got, got a nice big country here, Colonel. Why leave it? Yes. Couldn't you come home with Darian and me, just for a while? Europe will not hold me very long. I'll be at Daniel's, waiting. Of course, if you'd consider business, Colonel. I'd be more than happy to set you up in trade when you come back. Thank you. But Mr. Boone's remarks to us other falls. We have a large country here. I see it settled. Free of old world politics and intrigue. A free country. Independent as Mr. Boone himself. Also, I appreciate new customs. For example, boundary. <laughs> <laughs> the Colonel is the right idea. Also, our feet are seen. Goodbye, Colonel.